everyone, I'm Stan and welcome to a new format for our videos in which you also get to see my lovely face uh, because the YouTube team believes that this will help with engagement and will make our videos more entertaining. We'll see about that, but until then let's have a look at the first combat engagement of the Hungarian Tiger tanks courtesy of Alex Tarasov. The history of the Hungarian tank forces during World War II still has many blank spots. The existing sources are contradictory and data is difficult to verify. Now you could argue if this is worse or better than having a lot of data that also contradicts itself or a lot of people that believe up to nonsense, but it is what it is. However, the depths of Russian archives hold hidden treasures to whoever can access them. One of these finds sheds light on the first combat engagement of the Hungarian Tiger Tanks in 1944. If you want to find out more about the Hungarian Tiger Tanks, we have another video on it somewhere here. There is strong evidence that on 26 July 1944, Hungarian Tigers clashed with the Soviet 1448th Self-Propelled Artillery Regiment, which supported the advance of the Soviet 18th Army. By the beginning of July 1944, the Soviet 18th Army consisted mainly of infantry and artillery units, supported by the 1448th Self-Propelled Artillery Regiment, perhaps the only armoured formation in the whole army. Interestingly enough, the command of the 18th Army knew that there were enemy tank forces in the area of operations since 28th June 1944. They also recognized that some of these units were equipped with Tigers, but did nothing to reinforce the anti-tank capabilities of the troops. According to Soviet intelligence, which like all intelligence services is really reliable, the enemy tank forces included the 2nd Hungarian Tank Division with up to 60 tanks, the 16th Tank Division with 45 tanks, 18 of which were Tigers, and the 10th Reserve Tank Battalion with up to 30 tanks. Subsequently, after July 26, prisoners of war provided Soviet intelligence with more details on the Hungarian 2nd Tank Division. They testified that the 2nd Tank Division was formed in 1938, consisting of 3 motorized regiments, 3 tank regiments, 2 RO, we believe those are intelligence detachments, but we can't figure out what they meant in the original source, as well as a medical battalion, 2 signal battalions, and 2 artillery battalions. The 2nd Tank Division, in full force, had operated in the direction of Kolomia since April 1944, but at the beginning of May, it was withdrawn to the reserve and was located in the area of Maidan Sredni, Deliatin, and Molotkov. The 2nd Tank Division was part of the 1st Hungarian Army, but acted as a separate division. Do you understand that when we talk about armies here, we're not talking about the whole Hungarian Army, but a part, a unit of the Hungarian Army, which is called an army. By the end of July 1944, this division consisted of one reconnaissance detachment with 150 troops, 2 battalions and 2 companies of Hungarian tanks, and one battalion of German tanks and self-propelled guns. In total, the division had up to 90 tanks, split as follows. Two battalions of Turan-1 tanks were divided into four companies for a total of 40 tanks. There were also two companies of Turan-2 tanks for a total of 20 tanks, and one battalion of German tanks and self-propelled guns. The 2nd Tank Division was being kept in the reserve of the 1st Hungarian Army and had to be used for mobile defense and counterattacks. With the intensification of the actions of the Red Army, the tanks were moved from one intermediate position to another, but the order to retreat was not given. Now, for the Soviets, we're talking about the Soviet 1448th Self-Propelled Artillery Regiment, which was formed in April of 1943. Some sources claim that the 1448th Self-Propelled Artillery Regiment was formed according to the Reduced Table of Organization of Equipment, number 08-191 from 1942. The unit included 289 personnel and 20 self-propelled guns, divided into 5 batteries of 4 armored vehicles each. Three batteries were armed with SU-122s, 
while the two other batteries had SU-76s. However, the unit's war diary shows that by July 1944, the unit had been out of its table of organization, as it had 33 self-propelled guns in 7 batteries. It should be noted that such an organization and the number of self-propelled guns are quite uncommon for Soviet self-propelled artillery regiments. Usually, self-propelled artillery regiments were armed with 12 to 21 self-propelled guns in 5 batteries. Which table of organization and equipment was used by the 1448th is not yet known. From the 1st of May 1944 to the 1st of August, the 1448th was part of the 18th Soviet Army. On 23rd July 1944, the regiment was attached to infantry units of the 18th Army. Five batteries with 23 self-propelled guns were attached to the 66th Infantry Division of the 95th Rifle Corps, while two batteries with 10 self-propelled guns were attached to the 226th Infantry Division of the 11th Rifle Corps. The 1448th was tasked in helping infantry to break through the enemy line of defense in the area between Mikhalkov and Cheremhov, and supporting the further advance. After reconnaissance and establishing contact with units of the 66th and 226th Infantry Divisions, the Army Commander decided to attach self-propelled guns to the assault battalions to break through the enemy's front line. In the first line, the self-propelled guns were distributed throughout the entire breakthrough sector of the 18th Army in order to deceive the enemy, showing the presence of many armored units in the area. They were trying to deceive the Germans that they had more tanks than they actually did. On the night of July 23rd, the SUs moved up to their forward positions. After the artillery preparation, they started the offensive, firing from short stops and supporting the infantry. When crossing the minefield, six self-propelled guns were destroyed by mines. However, the right group of eight self-propelled guns and the left of ten SUs passed through the minefields along the passages made and continued to support the advancing units of the 66th and 226th Infantry Divisions. After the breakthrough of the enemy's front line in the Yusefovka area, two more SUs were lost to mines and another self-propelled gun was hit by artillery fire. The regiment's total losses amounted to nine self-propelled guns, eight to mines and one destroyed by artillery. Just 5 personnel were killed, of which 2 were officers in addition to 15 wounded, of whom 3 were officers. The Soviets really cared how many officers they lost. On 24th July, self-propelled guns continued to support the advancing units. They were again divided into 2 groups, the left one with 8 guns and the right one with 12. The right group was in turn divided into 2 detachments of 7 and 5. The right group fought in the area to the north and south of the hill 344.4. Just a memo, the numbers after hills usually refer to their height as they don't have names and it's the only way to refer to them on maps. One of the groups with 7 guns, together with the 195th Infantry Regiment, captured Grabich. The second group with 5 self-propelled guns operated in cooperation with the 193rd Infantry Regiment and captured Gliboka and by the end of the day, the station Goloskov. The left group of eight self-propelled guns acted in collaboration with units of the 226th Infantry Division. By 10 hundred hours that day, Soviet troops took the southern outskirts of Klebichen Lesny. On 25th July, the 1448th was divided into two groups and continued to support the offensive of the rifle units. The first group, by the end of the day, took the village of Kamena, to the north of Nadvornaya, and the second group approached the Nadvornaya station where it met strong enemy resistance. Self-propelled guns together with units of the 985th Infantry Regiment managed to break through from the northeastern direction by 1600 hours on the same day, and they completely captured the city of Nadvornaya. By 1900 hours, Soviet units crossed the Bistrica River, and developed the offensive northwards along the nadvorna bogorodchani Highway. It is noted in the regiment's war diary that units of the 1448th fought with enemy tanks, two of which were knocked out and subsequently captured. What these vehicles were, we have no idea. The result of the battles on July 24th, 25th, 
so that no self-propelled guns were lost. Thus, the regiment continued to operate with at least 20 self-propelled guns. On 26 June 1944, at 20.30 hours, self-propelled guns of the right group took tank descents, those are infantry soldiers who rode into an attack on the tanks, on board and after a swift march captured Bogorchani. The left group was less fortunate as it subsequently faced the Hungarian Tigers of the 2nd Tank Division. A group of five self-propelled guns progressed towards Bogorodchani, with the reconnaissance detachment of the 985th Infantry Regiment moving ahead of the main group. The enemy unit allowed the avant-garde to pass towards Hill 386.0. Having let the SUs advance at a distance of up to 200 meters, the Hungarian tanks opened fire. Two self-propelled guns were burned and two were knocked out with only four men killed and five wounded, which showed that the crews got out of there quite fast. According to the war diary of the 1448th, there were five tanks in the ambush, including three tanks that were claimed to be Tigers, supported by an infantry company. The ambush itself was prepared at the southeastern edge of the forest east of Dombrovka. Immediately after that, the Hungarian units launched a counter-attack in the Ostra region, but were forced to withdraw, leaving one Tiger and one Turan II at the intersection of roads in Lyakovica, possibly due to mechanical failure or lack of fuel. Now, in this kind of engagement with self-propelled guns facing tanks that were laying in an ambush, the Soviets were a bit out of luck. Not only did they have no idea where the enemy was shooting from, but in order to return fire, they had to figure out where the enemy was, turn the whole vehicle around, aim, load, and fire, which is not something you want to do when basically fighting one-on-one -on -one against enemy tanks at close range. Other self-propelled guns of the 1448th Regiment continued to fight in the Solodvin area west of Nadvornaya. The results of the day for the regiment were the losses of four SUs, four crew members killed, and eight wounded. Soviet troops reported that they had burnt out two tanks in the Banya district, destroyed 12 machine guns and three mortars, had killed 150 soldiers and officers, and 75 enemy soldiers were captured. If these are in any way inflated, which is usually the case, well, we can't verify at the moment. Additionally, Soviet troops captured more than four tanks, one of which was an operational Panzer IV, which was used against the enemy. The Hungarian forces continued to retreat westwards. Now, combat is a confusing experience, and it is certainly true that tanks have often been misidentified as something else across different theatres. In recording these events, it is important to consider this possibility here too, that the Soviet soldiers misidentified the tanks in the ambush as Tigers, especially as most of the crews of the Soviet SUs were just undergoing a significant emotional experience. The prospect of misidentification, however, seems quite unlikely for several reasons. Firstly, the crew members who survived could have claimed any number of any enemy vehicles. However, in the war diary, they emphasized that only three of the five tanks were Tigers. Secondly, the 1448th had enough time to get familiarized with new German tanks between January 1944 and May 1944, when it was employed near Chernovsky. There is a note in the war diary that on 8th April, the unit held an exercise with live fire and captured Panther tanks. Besides, the unit had fought against Hungarian units, including armored, since May 1944. Thus, so Thus soldiers and officers most likely were experienced and able to identify enemy FVs. However, it can be argued that while they were undergoing a significant emotional experience and were hurriedly trying to get out of their vehicles, they also had to identify vehicles that lay in ambush, probably in concealed positions, while they were running for their lives. So, if it is certain that these were Tigers or not is a bit hard to say, but it is reasonable given that the 2nd Tank Division did have Tigers and there were also other units with Tigers in the area. According to Soviet documents, the Battle of Nadvornaya, or to be precise, near Hill 386.0, was not as successful for the Hungarian tankers as mentioned in some sources. Most likely for propaganda purposes, the number of destroyed Russian AFVs was simply doubled, an occurrence that happened on both sides of the front. 
Unfortunately, the documents do not mention which exact types of SVGs the ambushed group of the 1448th was equipped with. It can be assumed that these were SU-76s, given that the crews got out of there quite fast with little casualties. However, while getting hit with a high explosive shell from either the 76mm gun of the SU-76 or the 122mm gun of the SU-122 would not be a pleasant experience in any tank you would be, it is certain that neither of these vehicles were quite up to the task of facing off against enemy tanks in these circumstances. The Hungarians competently organized an ambush, fully using the advantages of their tanks, resulting in success in their first battle. They did not suffer any losses this day. Later during the retreat, Hungarian tankers were forced to abandon some of their vehicles due to lack of fuel or mechanical breakdowns. The Russian forces would continue to advance towards the Hungarian border and the inevitable end of the war. The next major clash with enemy tank forces happened at Dolina on 31st July. That would be it. So yeah, we'll we'll see how we do. Uh, the lighting, the lighting. I don't know what I. Okay, come on, she doesn't. Know.